My name is Dr. Annie Fortin and I am the scientific director of the Canadian Gene Cure Foundation. The Canadian Gene Cure Foundation is a charity which, uh, through donations from the general public, supports research in Canada in the field of human medical genetics. In 2011, the Canadian Gene Cure Foundation has created a new grant program called Champions of Genetics. The goal of the program is to motivate the young investigators and bring their work yet to the next level. By funding positions in their laboratories, such as uh, graduate students or postdoctoral investigators, we bring them the resources necessary to advance their research faster and to be competitive worldwide in the field of genetics. Dr. Nada Jabato is an Associate Professor of Pediatrics at McGill University. Her area of research is pediatric brain cancer. Her publications in this area are groundbreaking, and because of her growing recognition in this field, her research group receives samples of pediatric brain tumors from collaborators around the world. Her team then characterizes the genetic makeup of these tumors to improve our understanding of the molecular events and pathways responsible for their formation and progression. Her goal is to identify new therapeutic targets to ultimately enable treatment of these devastating lethal diseases. I was first inspired to be a human genetics researcher when I learned about um, the secrets genes hold to curing cancer. I want to know how do we deliver genetic health care, um, genetic counseling, genetic services to people around the world in various social and developmental, economic and cultural contexts. And how do we build that research capacity to be able to do the kind of science that can really improve care and diagnosis of cancers? Of course, I think that's why we do healthcare research to improve care and ultimately life, quality of life, and, su and survival for patients. We are hoping that the results from our project will inform how genetic healthcare can be, be best delivered. Um, in these various social cultural settings. Retinoblastoma has given us a lot of answers in terms of the genetic development of cancer and I think there's many many more lessons to be learned by studying this cancer. It really meant a lot to have the support of the Canadian Gene Care Foundation in someone so new and green like myself and I'm really thankful to have that opportunity. My research involves looking for genetic factors of adverse drug reactions. We receive samples really from all across Canada that we um, conduct these really high throughput genetic screens on to try to identify things that are in common with patients that have suffered an adverse drug reaction and compare them with patients that did not suffer an adverse drug reaction. And, uh, and by doing this, then we can identify genetic factors that predispose these patients to these serious adverse drug reactions. And, and once we've found these types of um, connections, we can use that information and moving forward into the future, we can design a test that a patient receives even before they receive the drug, so that we could know if they were about to develop some sort of adverse drug reaction. Uh, the Canadian Gene Care Foundation funding has really been very important to me and to my lab, and it's helping fund um, a really key part of our research. Because we strongly believe that what we're working on right now is going to have clinical implications for children and make their medication use safer in the future. And we're very grateful for the to the donors of the Gene Cure Foundation for providing that funding so that we can advance this type of important research. For the last 15 years, I've been studying the human genome, and I'm convinced more than, than ever that by studying the genome, we will revolutionize the way we're practicing medicine. I'm leading a genomic research program on heart and lung diseases. Uh, I'm heavily involved in research collaboration and I'm leading a genomic research group uh, using state-of-the-art technologies and approach in genomics to identify genetic factors and molecular mechanisms that cause heart and lung diseases. Our goal is to uh, drive the discoveries in this field, but I would say most importantly is to translate this gen genomic knowledge into clinical application to uh, eventually personalize the treatment of patients afflicted with heart and lung diseases. The champion grant that I have received has uh, allowed uh, me to hire a highly qualified person to help us with the bioinformatic that we need to do in, in our lab. So uh, the only reason I was able to hire a postdoc like uh, Jérôme 
was, uh, was because of the support that I received from the Canadian Gene Cure Foundation. The project that, uh, that I lead, that is being funded by the Canadian Gene Cure Foundation, uh, it is in the field of pharmacogenomics. Uh, the objective is to identify uh, genetic uh, determinants that will help us uh, treat patients with anticoagulant. And one anticoagulant in particular is warfarin. It's been studied already in the field of pharmacogenomics. It is well known to have genetic determinants that can modulate uh, the response in patients. And so what, what we do in our particular study is uh, we are looking for determinants of stability. Uh, so some patient will be stable and some patient will be unstable on warfarin treatment. And so we are aiming to find genetic determinants that will help us identify patients uh, that are unstable and so to whom we can offer alternative treatment. The Champion of Genetic Grant has allowed me to identify a fantastic postdoc. Uh, his name is Payman Shahabi. He's a cardiologist by training, uh, completed a PhD in pharmacogenomics with uh, Gérard Sieste and it's, uh, it's really a perfect match. The project, the Warfarin project, is Perfect. We have a genome-wide data uh, that he's currently analyzing, and uh, we also have parallel project that we're thinking about and uh, and we're getting involved in, which um, which are very promising as well. So I'm very happy to have been able to attract him uh, in our team. I just started in a lab, following my interests in comparative endocrinology and in exotic species and moved on to studying mitochondria and, and whole animal physiology at, at the PhD level and my postdoc was in Eric Schubridge's lab and, and the focus there obviously is mitochondrial diseases and human genetics and, and here we are. Uh, the research project that's supported by the Champions of Genetics grant really strives to understand at a very basic level how uh, we uh, handle copper which is an essential nutrient we acquire from our diet and how when mitochondrial function is perturbed this affects copper handling at a cellular through to a systemic level of organization and causes human disease. Uh, we know that if we can't acquire copper or if once acquired copper can't properly be handled and moved throughout cells that this is not synonymous with life yet the mechanisms by which copper is handled remain poorly understood and specifically the relationships between different pathways that handle copper and how they actually come together to form a cohesive unit uh, our understanding of, of that you know, from a molecular genetic perspective is in its very infancy and so this grant aims to through the use of animal models uh, better understand the basic biology of copper handling and how when it's perturbed this causes severe forms of disease but well, the Champions of Genetics grant was integral because as an early stage uh, investigator uh, it allowed me to recruit a postdoctoral fellow and I didn't have funds to do that and so uh, it, what it did was bring uh, steady senior leadership to the lab, someone with uh, capable hands and a track record uh, in science and in molecular genetics. Uh, this person was therefore uh, a role model for junior trainees in the lab they uh, were basically a second in command and, and working side by side with them we were able to advance our research much more quickly and uh, with far fewer hiccups. My research is to repurpose drugs out of the clinical ready compounds to treat rare genetic disorders which includes in particular spinal muscular atrophy, myotonic dystrophy, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. My name is Nafisa Tasnim and I've been working here at the Chio Research Institute alongside for us since about last summer and I originally started as a summer student working on myotonic dystrophy type 1 and we've been working on trying to find a treatment and a cure to help these patients living with this rare disease and it's really rewarding work because you could potentially see um, what you've done in finding the treatments and see those translated to the clinical trials and see those actually help people in the real world. We are definitely had getting a lot of positive response from the scientific community worldwide for our research and I want to thank Kennedy and Gene Cure Foundation along with um, CAHR Institute of Genetics for helping me at this stage of my career. I am a scientist at the Women's College Research Institute specifically in the Familial Breast Cancer Research Unit. 
I'm also an assistant professor at the Dalana School of Pu Public Health and the Department of Nutritional Sciences at the University of Toronto. I'm currently leading numerous studies that are looking at factors such as diet, physical activity, body weight, and how they may help decrease the risk of breast, ca breast cancer and ovarian cancer in women with a BRCA1 or 2 mutation. So the project that um, was funded by the CGCF is to evaluate a role of folate, which is a vitamin in the development of breast cancer in women with a BRCA1 or 2 mutation. Uh, today I'm isolating some RNA from one of my uh, patient samples. So I'm Joanne's graduate student, and my project is looking at how RNA expression, BRCA1 in particular, is affected by physical activity in women who carry BRCA1 mutations. So I take blood from the patients and bring them back to the laboratory uh, and isolate RNA from those samples. There's a lot of evidence, scientific and experimental evidence, showing that high levels of folate may, may in fact be harmful specifically for people predisposed to developing cancer. The funding that I received from CGCF is very helpful in helping me secure a graduate student and get my, my research program underway. So one thing that inspired me to become a human genetics researcher is that I'm an identical twin and thus I share a DNA blueprint with my twin brother. I've always been fascinated by the, the similarities and the differences between us and this is what led me to become uh, interested in human genetics. The Champions of Genetics grant has really afforded me the time and resources to be able to train the next generation of young researchers. About 25 percent of cases of colon cancer have a genetic cause we don't know what that cause is. There's a better chance for curing people if you can catch the cancer early. So in these 25 percent of people who get colon cancer who have a familial inherited problem uh, in their genes, uh, we need to figure out what that is. Exome sequencing is really, uh, I think, going to be the key to figuring out what the genes are that are increasing the risk in these families. And so that's really what our project is all about. We're bringing the newest technologies in genetics, exome sequencing, genome sequencing, to bear uh, on these people who certainly do have an inherited risk, but we just haven't been able to find out what it is yet. But once we do find it with these new technologies, we'll be able to uh, first of all, better direct the care towards these people and uh, we know that for their relatives it makes a big difference because if you can tell the relative that they're at a higher risk for colon cancer because they have the same genes as their relatives who already got the cancer, we can screen them earlier and we can treat them better. So uh, I really do think that this is an exciting time for us in terms of this research. I think we're at a critical point in history. We barely begun to scratch the surface of, of our understanding of relationship between genes and disease in the human genome. And so I think government agencies will need to make important decisions about how we're investing in both our own future and the future of our children. And I think the Champions of Genetics Grant is doing just that. Becoming a scientist is a very long and exciting journey. It's a great fulfilling career. There's constant change, interaction, many collaborations, opportunity to um, diversify. Well, as the Dos Equis man says, uh, stay thirsty, my friends. Uh, you know, one has to remember uh, why they got into science to begin with. Inside every scientist is this little kid asking why, 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 and it's a question you can't ignore. Important challenge that uh, researchers in Canada are facing right now is funding. And that is where Canadian Gene Care Foundation stands up. Not only they help uh, young scientists like me in their early careers to hire new staff and fund them for research, but they also allow young scientists, uh, encourage them to stay within Canada and pursue a career. Uh, and I, I think that researchers should spend most of their time finding a cure for disease and not finding money. Through additional donations, the Canadian Gene Cure Foundation will be able to maintain its mission and contribute to the development of a new generation of scientists working in the field of genetics in Canada.